Hey guys, I'm Dustin and Sawyer is not with me on this video. He did not go with me on the Big Cypress uh, hike. Those of y'all that watch the channel and are subscribed regularly, um, my son Sawyer is with me on everything. He'll be with me on future hikes, but this one was a little tough for a kid that age, that um, that size probably. It was a pretty tough trail, which brings me to this. Now that I'm fresh off the trail, had a day or two to kind of recuperate, I kind of wanted to go through a video and just talk about, I've already got a lot of questions from people and some input that I have up here before I lose it. I like to share it with you because I did a lot of research coming into this and I wanted to know what to expect and how to prepare. And I watched a lot of YouTube videos, uh, Jupiter Hikes, Kelly Hayes, uh, Hiking America, I hope I ain't missing anybody. Oh, uh, uh, hiking, uh, homemade wanderlust. I watched all their videos and just to kind of get an idea of what to expect. So I want to share my thoughts, what I think. And, you know, these are just my thoughts. So if it doesn't line up with what somebody else has been on the trail thinks, that's, you know, that's, that's their thoughts. So, all right. So let's get into this. What did I think of the Big Cypress Swamp, that, that section of the Florida Trail, the southernmost terminus? I thought it was awesome. Um, I loved it. It was amazing. It was tough. It was beautiful, very diverse. But my thoughts are it's awesome. Um, I would do it again. I'd like to see it a little bit different. Um, we did go at a time, from what I understand, that was probably one of the highest water levels in years. And the one word that I used in, in our video to describe it would be relentless. That trail can be relentless. And I'm going to try chapters in this video too. I've never done it before. So I'm going to try to use chapters so you can chop along. If you don't care about a subject, you can go on to the next one. What level of experience would I recommend to do this trail? I really believe that anybody can do the Big Cypress Swamp Trail as long as medically you're fine you know if you have any medicines or stuff you need to take them with you it's very remote there is no help uh, if you have a garmin in reach or something like that you probably want to take that if you've got some health concerns um, a lot of bad things can happen you know that's that's life um, embrace challenges get outside if you're gonna have fun sometimes it's gonna you know be a little more costlier than hanging out at the you know your neighborhood you know whatever roller skating rink whatever they got nowadays so i'm outside most of the time so i would say experience level i've hiked all over the world i hadn't hiked like that in a long time and that's probably the longest hike i've taken with a pack i was on a 30 pound pack and so i mean we pushed it we humped it we got through in two days um one whole day spent the night and the next whole day and we were out so I think any level it depends on how hard you go if you take four five six days to get through I think any fitness level could get through um, but it takes some perseverance and it takes some uh, what we used to call intestinal fortitude working hard being able to push through that stuff so what I what I recommend going solo or going with two people or with a group I would recommend at least two people and I say that because there's so many hazards and so many things that can go wrong on a hike like that. Um, I've done some of the Appalachian Trail. I've done trails in a lot of different places in different countries. This place is very remote. Once you get in there and you're like 10 miles plus into it, there's really nothing that's going to help you. Um, I mean, they'd have to probably helicopter some people in or have some people, you know, really come in there and hike hard to get to you. If you broke an ankle or a leg, you'd be in a bad shape for morale. When you get in the Black Lagoon and stuff, it's so long, it's so relentless, and it really helps coping with that by having a second person that if you start getting negative or start getting in your head, like I'm never getting out of here, it can help you through. Oh, animals. Everybody's always afraid of, you know, we're in Florida. I'm from Florida, born and raised here, so I'm used to being in the woods and the water my whole life. Um, what about the animals people are scared of? You know, alligators. I never saw an alligator the whole time. Not even at the Welcome Center because we came in at night and it was dark and we saved our lights and just kind of slept there while a tornado was 
tornado watch was in place. It was pretty nasty. But uh, we went the next day, pushed all the way through. I never saw one alligator the whole time. We ran into Siesta, who was a through hiker from northbound. She, we met her in the Black Lagoon. She said that there was a six foot gator in the in the path. The path in some of them places is not even two, three feet wider than the most. And so it shocked her. She said, hey, you know, it wouldn't get out of the way. But uh, finally she was able to get around it. He's cooler and that time of year is cooler. So alligators go dormant in Florida. They're not very active. They're cold blooded and they really don't want to mess with you. We were in there at night as well. I didn't see any red eyes, which usually you'll pick up pretty quick, but we didn't use a light much even in the dark, which was a whole nother situation. Pythons. Pythons are a big deal. Um, there's a lot of pythons down in that area and that's something that you're going to want to be careful of. That's another reason to have two people. If you're cowboy camping or something, I mean, I don't know. That'd be kind of sketchy to me. I liked being in a tent. That way I had a barrier in between me and that. It's, there's, we do not see many animals like possums, raccoons, rabbits, rats, um, not even a whole lot of birds. The pythons have, ate, have eaten a lot of the small game down there in that area. And it's, pythons are concerned. Um, we've seen pictures here in Florida down that area where pythons have eaten deer, eaten six eight foot gators and they died with them in their belly but they still ate it so you know i'm smaller than an eight foot gator never heard a panther never saw panther tracks never saw a bear never saw bear tracks just be aware you know of your surroundings and just keep moving on didn't have any problems all right what about other hazards what other hazards are there out there holes and i'll try to put some in while i'm talking but the limestone holes are no joke. Uh, I completely dropped out to my uh, thigh uh, in the Black Lagoon. I avoided several holes along the way. Trey broke two of his poles, bent two of his poles. Uh, I did not. I don't know how. But those trekking poles were a lifesaver for me. You got stumps. There's cypress stumps in the trail, in the, uh, in the water. Most of what we was in was water. So the trail's not, but in a lot of places, maybe two foot wide. And where that, uh, I don't know if you can see me in this camera, it'll actually kind of concave down in to where everybody walks. So if you try to come up out of it some, your foot will get sideways and that mud is like butter. You'll slide right back down to the middle. Now in the middle is where, you're, you know, the mud's kind of been removed where those holes are at. You'll get your foot stuck in a hole. You can trip. Several times I fell into trees where, thankfully in the Black Lagoon where I would hit a hole and go to stumble over because the water was always knee to thigh high for us in there. I go to stumble over and catch myself on a cypress tree just outside the trail. And that saved me many times in the water themselves. Sometimes little pieces, little cypress knees, and sometimes places where the trail was cut and there'd be one off to the side. I kicked them a couple times. My left big toe, the toenail's black. I kicked it, it hurt bad. My right foot, Second toe over from my big toe. I kick kick one hard two or three times with that one. Toes like bent over. That one's black on the end. If you're the first person walking in the trail, it's clear. You can see all this stuff as you're going. It's almost crystal clear the whole time we were there. If you're the first person. If you're the second person, which I was a lot of the times because Trey's got such big legs, I didn't want to hold him up, let him get going. If you're the second person, it's it's real silty. You can't see anything. So the first person usually goes and can identify hole, big hole, or hey, stumps right here. And that kind of gives you a heads up. All right, what type of pack did I bring? All right, I got asked that question. I brought a, I think it's called a Vanheimer or whatever. I'm not very big on buying all the expensive stuff, but it was a 45 plus five liter, so a 50 liter bag. And I'm gonna tell you, I had it maxed out. I probably had too much weight. I had 29 and a half pounds. So interesting enough, we ran into Fire, who's doing the, he's the high hiker on YouTube. Fire had six pounds. He was toting six pounds in his bag. What what did I bring, you know, with the weight? We have a video and I can link it at the end of this one, which is what I packed, what I brought. We planned on doing three days, two nights in the swamp. And I had segmented it out how we should do it and what we would need to bring. And it was all calculated, but we ended up doing two days, rucking it hard. 
And so we had things we did not need. Okay, what do we eat and drink? We so we had <clears throat> we had some of the mountain home meals. Uh, let's see, I think Trey brought some Dollar General uh, or Dollar Store uh, instant potatoes. Those were awesome. The mountain home meals were good. We had uh, like a fajita stuff or something like that, rice. I brought some macaroni and cheese. I took uh, four packs of them and dumped them in one Ziploc. We ate them up and had some real bacon bites put in there. The second morning, we had the scrambled eggs from Mountain Home. I about hurled. I, could, I don't know if it was just from the hike and exerting ourselves. I couldn't eat much the second morning. I had some granola bars that were fine. But Trey couldn't eat them either. They were nasty. I do not recommend the Mountain Home scrambled eggs. I'm good. Um, we had Himalayan salt, I think, or as electrolyte uh, capsules. And we used them. We, we used those. And the water that we used was straight from Big Cypress. We used the Sawyer Squeeze filters. Uh, Trey, you saw your minis. I had Sawyer Squeeze. And we used them. It was fine. The water tasted great. There was no bad taste to it. Um, and water was everywhere. Water was plentiful. And instead of stacking a bunch of heavy water in our bags, we just drank as we went. I had granola bars. We had some Jolly Ranchers and Werther's, which when we were just feeling bummed, we'd drop one of them and it would just make a huge difference. And uh, kind of like a pick-me-up. Had a bag of M&Ms that I got just for that same reason. And when we got the Black Lagoon and we were just wore out and needed to pick me up, we sat down and the first thing out the top of my bag I pulled out was those M&Ms. And me and Trey crushed them. And it was like a pick me up. We were like, let's go hit it. And we just got back on it. Okay, what about for gear? The one thing that I would change for gear. I want to talk about the climate. Okay, let's make this about the climate. I didn't know what to, well, I thought I knew what to expect, but this is Florida and people don't realize how fast it can get hot and cold and what what cold is really cold here. You know, 60 degrees, most of the country probably thinks that's not cold. In Florida, 60 degrees and it's damp can start to get down to your bones. All right, so I went in there thinking possibly one night down to 58, but the next day was supposed to be 80. We got in there and it stayed like 60, never got to 70 the next day. It rained and drizzled on us. There was a little wind that was cutting and the water was freezing. The water was, it felt good on the first day, probably about 74. When we were in the Black Lagoon, I don't know if our body temperatures were just dropping that bad or what happened. Maybe it was from the fresh rain the night before that day. But in the Black Lagoon, the water started feeling like it was 68, 69. We were in bad shape. Um, we put on our emergency uh, Mylar parkas, uh, ponchos, and did that solely to keep our body heat in. Uh, I probably was not as prepared as I should have been on that. I thought I was. Um, and in reality, we were. We could have stopped, threw up a tarp. I brought a tarp at the last minute, and I'm glad I did because... For an emergency, you can put it up, we can build a fire, we can try to warm up, and it almost came to that. And uh, that's part of the reason why we pushed through in two days was almost necessity. Um, having been, you know, so many years out in the woods, knowing how your body works and how the temperatures work, I thought it was better for us to go ahead and just not stop, push through, embrace the suck and get out of there and not have to stay another night with gear that got wet the night before and uh, potentially have a uh, health hazard issue. Bring something for cold weather, bring something for warm weather. That's going to affect the weight that you're going to bring with you. But be prepared to get wet and be able to survive in wet, damp, 60 degree weather because it's a possibility. And it also a possibility, it could be 85 and you can get heat stroke. So just be prepared. Over prepare for Big Cypress because there's no help coming. Okay, a question that I got and one thing that took a lot of my time on the front end was researching how am I going to get to Big Cypress? So for those of y'all know on the map, you got the Oasis Visitor Center down here and Alligator Alley 75 is up here and they're not close to each other. It's only 30 miles this way, but you either have to go around that way or around the other way towards Miami, right? Back around. 
So logistically, this hike can be a nightmare unless two of you bring two vehicles, right? Which is not always the easiest. I went on to the Facebook page where they have the uh, Florida Trail and I recommend going on there and I recommend also going to the Florida Trail Angels page on Facebook. And I want to take a second and say thank you to Ari on that page. Ari recommended me go to that. Ari was a wealth of knowledge. You can go on there and he can answer questions. I think it's Ari Hirschman, I believe is his name. If you go on there, there's only one Ari. You'll know who it is. And uh, so he gave us a lot of good advice. And then we happened up on somebody. Um, her name, we'll go by trail name, Faithful. Because she is the first time that she's done something like this. And she actually helped us out big time. Got us a ride. Um, man, she was awesome. Faithful, you're awesome. I, we got a picture with her. I promise her I wouldn't show it. Uh, she was just an awesome lady. Um, she did the hike in 2017. We parked at I-75 at the visitor center or the uh, rest stop there. Parked there, put the permit on my windshield stating where we were doing the hike. And then she drove us from 75 all the way around to the Oasis Visitor Center. And, uh, man, that was a blessing. And that was awesome. We really needed that. And uh, she's awesome. Her and her little cat, they helped us out. And we really appreciate it. So get on there and find a trail angel. We also ran into, I think, the Hawaiian. is another guy, trail name, the Hawaiian. He brought two more people from Miami. So he shuttled from that side and... Uh, Faithful shuttled us from the uh, Naples side over. So that was awesome. Like, wh when should you start the Big Cypress portion? Um, we're not through hikers, right? I don't, I got a family and I got a job. I, just, I can't take the time off and I don't have the money to, to you know, run up for 60 days. For those of y'all that do, that's freaking awesome. Wish I could do it. I'm going to section hike the whole thing. But uh, for us, we had to figure out when was we going to start it. So, Around November, a lot of people start, you know, hurricane season's over, usually, and drying out, supposedly, all the way back through about maybe February, March, I think's the end when people quit hiking it. We were going at the end of January, but a prescribed burn from the uh, National Park Service was going to take place on the 14th, so I called Trey and said, hey, can you do next week? Let's hit it. So he's able to get off, I was able to get off, and we were down there and just... We had a time crunch, so um, the, a lot of rain happened right before we got there. Rained hard the night before we got there, and then it rained the morning that we were on trail. So there was a lot more water, and from what I understand, it was a very high year, one of the highest years for water. I've watched a lot of other videos, and ours was pretty dang high on the water. So, all right, trail names and people you meet along the way. We met some really, really cool people. We met. A couple from Minnesota that came down there and we never saw them again. They were camped out. That tornado warning came through. It was nasty. And when we left, we saw them by the fence, said hey to them. Never saw them again. I wasn't sure if they even entered, but I actually seen them on Facebook, talked to uh, the girl and they actually uh, came in behind us and completed it. And they're out now too. So I uh, met them. I did not catch their trail names. Um, who we hiked with coming in, we met Fire, and you've seen him on the videos. He's doing the whole ECT. He started in Key West, going to Canada. We met Lickett, who's also coming from Key West all the way to Canada. His first hike, he's doing the whole ECT. We met Horseshoe and Serenity, and they have a YouTube channel as well, uh, Serenity and the Boys. And him and his son are doing the Florida Trail through hiking as well. So, uh, Siesta, we met in the Black Lagoon. She was working back southbound from the very beginning. So she was almost done with the whole trail. She'd been on for since November. So Trey, he goes by trail name Sasquatch. And I didn't have one going in, but ended up developing one because of all the research I did and looking into stuff and how I like to make sure I got everything together. Um, I ended up with the professor and, uh, for, I guess I'm a geek on that end, getting everything together, trying to make sure we have what we need and being prepared. But all right, some people ask, what what camera do we use? What is this? This is the Osmo, was it Os, Osmo Action Cam? Uh, we've been using this for a couple of years now. We were we were towards the top end of this trend. 
And uh, we've got two of them. We rotate them so we don't lose footage in case one gets corrupted or something. We switched to Osmos when Sawyer was a little bit smaller and he knocked my hat off and our GoPro went out and it's in the Atlantic Ocean somewhere with some good surfing footage on it too, probably. Signal. Do you have a signal out there? Well, we did have a cell phone signal. I was surprised. Um, on a seven mile camp, we had a signal. We were able to call. I was able to come call my wife, tell her, hey, well, this is where we're at. We're making good time. I was surprised. I had like two or three bars maybe. And then at, we were at just shy of 13 mile camp and I had a signal. I could get on Facebook. I could make phone calls. So we had a signal. After that, I think it got a little spotty. And then at Thank God Island, uh, I was with Serenity and Horseshoe and Trey and Sasquatch. And that he was able to watch YouTube. He, we had a good signal out there. So I would not depend on that, but there are some signals. Okay, emergency devices, in reach, uh, the Garmin's, uh, EPIRBs, personal locator beacons. Uh, we didn't use any of that. Um, I'll tell you, I thought the trail was very well marked, very well marked. There was one time that we kind of got diverted. That was more the fact of us, we had our head down pushing along and we missed uh, a blaze. I had a Venza maps that I use. It's you can, it's free, put it on there. We did not have, I did not use the, I didn't pay for the Far Out app. Um, I didn't find that I needed it. You know, of course that could have happened that I might have, but a Venza shows you where the trail's at. And even without a signal, you know, should be able to help you. If your phone does not work though, um, say you have no signal and whatever, you drop your phone. Uh, I use a compass and I use way markers of my own. I'm going to do a video on that probably if you guys want to stay tuned for that. But where worst comes to worst, how to find your way, either back on trail or out of there. All right. I think it's very important to have a compass with you and to have a way to mark it. It's so wet out there. You should be able to see footprints anyways and backtrack where it's more well-worn. So something to remember that. But Florida Trail Association marked that trail very good. And I had no problems. Now they're going to be burning tomorrow or today, I think. Once that happens, I don't know what's going to happen to the markings. But as of now, it was marked very good. All right. So what do we do for some of the uh, clothing that we wore, right? So I hiked in a $5, $5 pair of shorts I found at Walmart. They were on sale on the clearance bin. Super lightweight, like the mid-thigh shorts that I never wear but my wife likes them but i never wear them i think they're too short but they work really good for hiking they were very light i wore i bought three pairs of these socks they're like darn tough knockoffs i got on amazon they're that uh mary whatever you call it wool i'm gonna tell you what those socks were insane i never got a blister the whole time uh, Trey never got a blister the whole time. He's wearing some type of waterproof socks. I forget what, but I was wearing the wool, the synthetic wool stuff, and they were perfect. I wore a pair of old, I believe they were Skechers. I wore a pair of old shoes that were already ripping. I had a brand new pair of trail shoes, trail runners. I didn't want to mess them up. I wore those shoes. They got, they got tore up. They were tearing up anyway. I wore gaiters, the uh, Dirty Girl uh, gaiters. I wore those. I do think they helped some, but nothing's keeping that mud out of your... I had holes in the sides of my shoes, so um, you're going to have to stop and clean out that mud, especially by the front of your toes. It'll pack in there, and it'll it'll start to hurt your toes. So every once in a while, you're going to want to take them off. Day two, we went like 20 miles, never stopped, never cleaned out our shoes, never really did anything. We never ate lunch. We just kept trucking. I did wear a hat, wore a regular hat, got some sun on my neck the first day. Um, umbrella. I think an umbrella would be helpful. I mean, as long as it's not real heavy, it'll block some of the sun and it would have really helped with some of the rain, probably that drizzle. What time did we start and stop each day? So we started, gosh, man, you know, we, I thought we'd have been faster, but we didn't start to like 720 on the first day. And the second day, it might've even been like 738, 740. And the first day we were done by 437, 440. And then well, the second day, about 650, we got up out of the swamp. It was dark, well dark. 
uh, and it was nasty. That was a long second day. The first day we did take a couple little breaks. Uh, we totally planned on stopping at 10 Mile and camping for the night on day one. We got to 10 Mile at like 1 o'clock, 1.30, maybe even later, maybe even earlier than that, and 8 first. But we're like, man, we can't stop this early in the day. So we kept pushing on and got almost a 13 mile camp before we ran into fire and uh, decided to park it there and, you know, have supper and spend the night. But, you know, your pace is going to determine a lot on what you want to do with that. What was it like hiking in the swamp at night in the dark? It, it was a little scary, you know. Um, maybe it, I say a little at that point, we were so tired. If you look at the video, I'm moving so slow with my trekking poles. We're so beat. I really didn't give a dadgum at that point. Um, I didn't even turn on a headlamp. Um, we could see a little bit with ambient light. You know, it was overcast, so it kind of holds a little bit of light still. We kept moving through. I did think that I saw a moccasin at the very, towards the end when it was dark. And my care level was so low, I just took my pole and it looked like it was off the bank a little and the water kind of curled. I just took my pole and just put it up against it and just kind of held it back and over as I walked by. Never even looked back. Could have been a moccasin. I didn't see anything else the whole time I was in there that was like that. So, I don't know. I didn't care. We were so tired. We just kept moving. It's a little unnerving, but I can tell you, I think on a full moon, like if you go during a full moon time, I absolutely would hike a lot at night in there. Um, it's definitely doable. I don't think there's much of a problem. Gators, I don't think are gonna be a problem. If you do hike at night, you got a headlamp you turn on. Anybody that lives in Florida knows, you can see a gator from a mile away, red eyes. I doubt you'd see one because I didn't see any. I didn't see any. I think they're all pushed back because of the cold into some other areas during that time of year. We're gonna be doing more videos on hiking, camping out, you know, hiking, backpacking. Um, like I said, how to use a compass. Uh, way making, you know, waypoints, way making, whatever. Um, it's important to know how to use a compass, even the basics of it. So I'm going to do a little video on that. We got hiking videos coming up. We're going to do more sections of the Florida Trail. My goal is to do the whole trail and take Sorry Boy with me and uh, get him on there. That's just a tough one to take a kid on, especially when I didn't know what to expect. And uh, overall, great trip, trip of a lifetime. If you go, bring a camera, bring a bring one of these old cameras, whatever. It's memories. You know, we had some of the greatest times ever. Met some cool people and wouldn't trade that experience for the world. Uh, hopefully this video didn't bore you. Maybe it answered some questions you had. If you have more questions, leave a comment below. Uh, me and Sawyer love to read every comment and to reply back. And we do this for fun. It's just me and him, father and a son, going out having fun, doing things together, and uh, look forward to doing some more cool things. So, all right. So, hey, God bless. Have a good one.